Welcome to What's Out There. I'm Margie Wiggin and we're going to be exploring nature on the trails of Hopkinton. We have a wonderful resource here. Let's go see what's out there. Hi, we're here at Whitehall State Park. It's a beautiful park. It's mostly water, lots of boaters and um, people on the water. We also have six miles of trail that go around the state park. So we're going to see what's on the trail. Let's go. So here we are, still walking Piazza Lane. Beautiful view of the water lilies here. And the boat ramp is in the distance, so that's where we started. And this is the honeysuckle. It smells really good. Um, so, and the bees like it. There aren't any bees here right now, but it's just all around us. Smells wonderful, looks beautiful. Let's keep going. So there's some honeysuckle here. A Little bit of poison ivy on the side. I'm coming on to Piazza Lane which is going to be part of the trail for a little way here. And then after we do our six mile loop, we come right back out over here. So this is sort of the trailhead if, in a way. Let's see what's out there. So this trail runs right by Wood Street. You can hear some traffic, but we also have this sandy berm that's been put in here to essentially make Whitehall Pond a reservoir. It used to be used, actually, before we had Quabbin or Wachusett Reservoirs. It was used, I think, in the late 1890s as a reservoir for Massachusetts. Um, so they would have to contain the water. There was some water here from a mineral springs nearby, but they essentially made this a go-to place. We don't need it as a reservoir now because we have Quabbin and Whitehall. I mean, Wachusett, but if something happened, and Quabbin and Wachusett were not producing enough water, the state of Massachusetts would come here again. So this is a beautiful area. We've got poison some ivy. poison ivy, so it's on yeah. the side of the trail. I'm hearing cicadas in the trees, and we have lots of pine trees here, oak trees, maple trees. It's a beautiful, peaceful walk. Lots of roots from the trees which have grown here before. So it's beautiful and lots of fun. Let's keep going. So something that's really cool along the pathways, we have a lot of fern, we have some glacial rocks because this was actually a glacial pond, but also I'm noticing we have sassafras right here. Sassafras is something that is a tree. It has three different leaves. There's one that looks like a ghost. There's one that looks like just an oval. And then there's one that looks like a mitten, right? I don't know if, nope, this one doesn't have it, but it looks like this shape. So sassafras has been used um, to make tea. It's just a really cool plant because it's got three different leaves and it grows up to a really big tree. We also have something over here called Indian pipe, which is a fungus and it really only grows when it's very damp. So right here you can see that it looks like an upside down pipe that Native Americans would have made out of chert, I believe, or some kind of stone like that clay that's what they use so it looks like an upside down Indian pipe and that's why it's called Indian pipe very cool let's keep going Wow I'm hearing robins I'm hearing chickadees I'm hearing cicada if you walk this trail with your headphones on listening to music, you would miss all this beauty, not just visually, but also auditorily, if that's a word. So part of being out in nature is being able to absorb that nature. There's something actually called, I think it's called forest bathing, where you go out and you just immerse yourself in the experience, not just what you're seeing, but also what you're hearing. Can you hear those cicadas? Let's keep going. So 
So as we're walking, I'm noticing that we have blueberry bushes here. And I have heard that Whitehall is noted for its blueberries. Um, in fact, people pull over on the side of the pond and yeah, they can fine. feast at the edge of the pond. Here's mm -hmm. one actual blueberry in, uh, so, that's ripe. No, gonna, um, and lots of these are on the way. On so. so as we're walking along, we see lots of pine trees. There's a gray birch. But we also have hemlock, which is very interesting. So lots of different trees. I know that the white pine were planted to prevent erosion and also as a way of shielding the lake from the road, just making it a private space to be in. I just saw two morning doves and they not only make the hoo 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 noise, they also do kind of a twittery thing while they're flying. I can't make that one. But lots of wildlife here. It's awesome. Okay, so right here is where private land starts. You can hear the dogs. But I just wanted to show you that this is the house site. So this is where the house was. We have a little cellar hole over here. Um, can't really see what's under the bushes, but it's really a shame. This would have been a house off of Piazza Lane and uh, it burnt down. So again, campfire in the woods, you need to make sure there's cleared ground, you have water, all of those fire protections or just don't do a fire in the woods. I picked up what's called an oak gall. So this is where an insect has laid an egg on an oak leaf and the oak leaf puffs up around it kind of like a pearl in an oyster. But it's kind of cool. So if you come on one of these, it's not a, a gray or a brown golf ball. It's from an oak tree. It's an oak gall. Let's see what else we have. Wow. As I'm walking along here, I'm noticing this whole area is very cleared out. It's all of a sudden a little brighter and the understory has been disappeared. So when I look here, it makes me really sad to see that we've got burnt tree marks, burnt here, burnt here, in the distance, burnt trees. Pretty sure this is the site of a house fire. Um, maybe some kids were hanging around and lit a campfire. Never a good idea to light a campfire in the woods because this might happen. So the other interesting thing about this area is we don't just have the evergreens, we also have hardwoods. So right over here, I can see a tall sassafras, I can see oak, I can see maple, and back down here we have chestnut. And um, I was hearing that chestnut trees are becoming more rare. So it's awesome that we have this resource here with all of these hardwoods and we need to protect them. Let's see what else we have. So as I walked along the trail, I saw another beautiful pine tree. Looks very strong and sturdy. But then when we look at the bottom of the tree, there's been an injury to the tree. And we have lots of ants and insects eating away at the tree. The tree is actually leaning towards the path. And I would be concerned that in a big windstorm, this tree will fall right over friend told me that a lot of times when a tree does fall, the outside can look healthy, but the inside is rotten. So we've got to keep an eye on this one. Let's see what else we have. So we've noticed a lot of mushrooms on the trail. This is a particularly beautiful one. I do not have my mushroom book with me, so I suggest you bring your book with you if you have a mushroom book. Um, they, it is a fungus, so they tend to come out after there's been a lot of rain. And as we know, we've had a lot of rain this year. So red normally is not a good color to eat, but if you check your mushroom book, some of these are delicious and good to eat. Let's see what else we have. And as we're walking, you'll notice these yellow blazes on the trees. That's marking the trail. So if you're in doubt as to whether you're on the trail, this will help you know which way to go.
right here we have a beautiful birch. This is a paper birch, um, but I noticed a lot of people have written on it. It's really not cool to write on a tree. Um, it damages the tree and lets bugs or um, bacteria into those writings. So it's better just to look at it and enjoy how beautiful it is. It goes all the way up. Let's see what else we have. Okay, so I stopped here because I heard something rustling under the leaves. It could be a snake or a vole. It didn't surface, so I don't know what it is. But besides the blueberries, which are in season and, and ripe right here, we also have a little oak gall here, again. Um, and then this is some, there's a red berry. Um, oh, I lost it. So it's winter berry or what's this called? Winter green. Winter green. Winter green. But it has a berry on it. So there is a red berry. I would not advise eating that berry. That is poisonous. But it's very interesting. It goes along the ground here. So as I'm walking here, I'm noticing in this oak tree we have some woodpecker holes pretty significantly drilled in there. Um, the tree itself is very healthy. Um, but again, it's just interesting. So we know that we're in the tree, in the woods with some birds, obviously. We have some more oak galls on the ground. So that means that insects are laying their eggs. And also right up there is the continuation of Piazza Lane. Um, we either have this telephone pole and a little bit of electrical wiring going in there. Um, but it's off the beaten path, so we stay on the path. ups and downs to this trail. Lots of tree roots, which are good for trail running. I keep looking for deer, but I haven't seen them yet. This is either a snake hole or a chipmunk hole. Another beautiful clearing in view of the pond up on top of this nice glacial rock. Wow, look at this. This is such a beautiful view with these rocks. This whole area has 837 acres most of it water as I said and this is such a beautiful spot where the glacial rock stopped right here right next to the water look at this wow oh this is interesting so this is a it looks like a collection of bones but as I pick it up I see that we have some crustacean sections so this is probably crayfish and whichever carnivore chewed on this did not want the bones and shell, so they ate the other part, but that kind of got glued together because it got part way down its stomach and then coughed it up. Um, I did see some thin poo right here, so that's telling me that it's probably, there's some more right up there, it's probably, um, it could be fox or it could even be something like a muskrat, something that's a carnivore that lives near the water. So this is interesting. This is again evidence that we have deer here. This is a mountain laurel. Um, you can tell by this very woody uh, bark to it. It's, it's a shrub, but it's very woodsy. This right here, you can see where the flowers were um, because they have a flower that's got multiple parts to it. It's different from the honeysuckle that we've been seeing that just has one little thing that pokes up and it's very fragrant. So this has been kind of chewed on. Um, hopefully it comes back from deer damage. But that's another plant that we have here, mountain laurel. So 
we're coming to the end of the Peninsula Trail. The trail does con continue around the lake on the Yellow Blaze Trail, but we're going to head back on the Whitehall Conservation Trail. So follow me this way. So as I walked along here, I noticed a hornet near the opening of this hole, and this is too large to be an ant hole. So in my experience, this is a ground bee, ground hornet hole, and um, they fly in and out. This is small. Usually this would be a big mound of bee hill, hornet hill. So be careful if you see a big hole like that. It's, um, ground hornets are not, not nice. Well, they're defending their nest, but they do sting. I'm going to be joined by my cameraman, John Ritz. Very happy to have him along. He knows a lot about trails and Ow. Whitehall. <laughs> he advised me to wear sneakers, not the sandals that I had on. He has a good idea. I didn't realize how many routes there were going to be. Oh yeah. It's a nice trail, um, widely traveled, but it is rough and there are parts of it around the far end of the, the lake that are really kind of rugged. So yeah, good shoes are, are, are essential for this one. So it's six miles. Six miles all the way around. And does it go all, it goes all the way around? Yep, along, and it stays right within, in general, it stays close to the water the whole way. Fishermen use it to access their mm -hmm. fishing spots, and um, we've run into a whole bunch of trail runners today. Yep. Very popular with the trail running um, population here mm -hmm. in town. So one thing John was telling me was, um, Usually people are very considerate about trash on the trail and he, we don't we haven't seen any trash on the trail um, Once in a while there are beer cans or people have Enjoyed this in the evening with some beverages, but they take their beer cans with them and That is the best way. I mean you pack in pack out or leave no trace It's great that people are enjoying this great resource we have and people seem to be respectful for it about it. They are not damaging the property, they mm -hmm. aren't trashing it, so that's a good thing. And that makes me think of the dam. Um, dam was first dammed in 1708 yep. and it was Mus Muscatiquid was the well, Muscatiquid was the Indian name so of? So a little on the history. So originally yeah. this was three ponds. Um, the original pond was Whitehall Pond, mm -hmm. um, named after the White and Hall families. Mm -hmm. That was the largest pond and that's still the deepest part of the lake and that's down off Pond Street, if you cross the causeway um, at the end of Pond Street, mm -hmm. um, the water you're looking at is the original Whitehall Pond. Then there are two smaller ponds. Um, one was between these two big islands mm -hmm. you see out here. Mm -hmm. um, I forget where the third one was. It's farther. And then all three of those fed into a stream that flows out um, and goes down the valley. Now that's, they don't, there isn't a recording of a name, an original Indian name for this, but the the stream that came out of it was referred to as um, Muscatiquid, Muscatid, um, Muscatiquid, something like that. Yeah. And in general, that body of the stream name was the same as the pond name. And you said there used to be salmon and alewives. Yep. So fish. there used to be more fish here. Yep. Fish used to swim upstream from the Atlantic. But and then they spawn dammed it here. up. But as dams were built for industry all along um, what's the Sudbury River, mm -hmm. that stopped. They tried to convince the dam owners to build um, ways around it, um, their dams, so that people could Those continue to enjoy dam the fishing. Owners. But um, they didn't want to do that. So eventually those all died out. And now the fish that are in here are stocked by, oh. um, by the Department of Conservation. Record. Which is greatly appreciated by the fishing boats. It's a very popular fishing place. This is. Um, well known for bass fishing. It's mm. a shallow lake. Mm -hmm. um, even though it looks like a lot of deep scary water, average depth is only about eight feet or so for mm -hmm. most of it except for the really deep part. Um, and the bass love this and bass, bass fishermen come in here quite mm -hmm. a bit. Yep and we still you still have to wear a life jacket on a boat even though it's not yep. that deep. You want to take care of yourself. Right. Um, this all used to be a cedar swamp way back when, when it was just the three ponds, it was cedar forest. Um, the first industry in here was um, 
cutting down those cedar trees mm -hmm. and sawmills for that and actually down at the dam um, if you dig down under the the muck at the bottom of the lake they say there's 10 feet of sawdust cedar mm -hmm. sawdust going down below that and you said that's near pond street at the pond street end no that's oh it's behind the firehouse yep on wood street um those were the mills so I'm oh, talking, okay. right now i'm talking about the dam that that's okay. at the end of lake whitehall that and the little gatehouse that everybody knows okay. off winter street right okay then once you cross over wood street behind the woodville fire department hmm. that's where the the mills used to be and we had a huge industry in um knitting mills mm -hmm. back there and the remains of those mills are still back there and the old mill ponds and mm -hmm. it's real pretty the waterfalls and such so that's cool the visit too yeah good to know let's keep going mushroom <laughs> Do you want to get this one too? It's not. So the trail continues around the lake for six miles. We have come to the end of the peninsula and we're going to turn around and go back along the Whitehall Conservation Area Trail. Follow me this way. So here we are at a trail junction. We have three trails coming off of this point. This trail right here, the gatehouse trail, leads over to the dam. There's a house on the dam. And then um, to Reed Park in that direction. And then down here, straight ahead, is the trail that goes back to the Whitehall Conservation Area parking lot. And we're going to take a left up here to get back over to Piazza Lane, which will take us back to the boat ramp on Lake Whitehall. Follow me. So this black line right here looks to me like it could have been a lightning strike. We came past a few birch trees that were knocked down even though they were perfectly healthy. So the storm the other day, that very heavy thunderstorm, could have done some damage here. Not sure. Let's see what else we got.
Are you worried about letting your child take the wheel? Maybe you should also be worried about what you're doing behind the wheel. Have you ever sent a quick text just this once? Well, that might turn into a catastrophic accident. Monkey see what monkey do. If you do it, why wouldn't your child? In a child's brain, almost all things their parents do, they can do too. 78% of teen drivers' surveys text and drive. 59% said their parents do it too. Stop texting and driving, because if you do it, your child will too.